So the story of mobile, as you know, currently is the largest female millennial platform worldwide. We reach millions of women each week, 18 million per week, enabling them to connect, share information, and access knowledge from each other. And we are backed by some incredible media innovators from Hearst, to the founders of Comcast, Match.com, the heads of NPR, MTV, the Girl Head Education, Fortune Time People, as well as uh, Diamond Furstenberg, Gary Vaynerchuk, all who collectively believe that mobile is the next generation media and technology company for girls and women. And we are globally accessed every single day by every single country, 30,000 cities around the world as well, that all in the end, are connecting in order to share information from one another, access knowledge from each other, because we are that much better and stronger together. That's why we are in an unprecedented place to impact women's lives in a way that's never been done before, which was why now even the United Nations has named us their technology partner for advancing gender equality and quality education. For every dollar that mobile earns, the United Nations provides a free education to one woman in need, leveraging mobile's own educational resources as their own for girls worldwide which is why now even 62 million women around the world now are receiving a free education thanks to mobile in the UN. People love to talk about themselves. That's why we're here. And so when you are even in an entry level role, even senior in your company or an intern, asking people about their career trajectory, oh, they love it. People love to talk about themselves. Asking someone, may I shadow you? People love the opportunity to kind of seem like they're a boss. And, um, even if, let's say you're not interning at a particular company, but for some reason you have a relationship with someone who you admire, uh, ask them, perhaps can I come to your office for a few hours and shadow, and shadow you? You may get a lot out of it. Backing it up just a tad bit, before you get the entry level role, before you get the internship, your resume needs to be up to par. So One thing that I really learned from the internship panel was that you're not supposed to put a picture on your resume, which I know some students think it's okay, but they really don't want to look at you before they see your resume. And when they want to see your resume, they want to see like a blank, like they want, don't want to know per, like personality. They don't want to know what you look like. They want to know, they want, would rather have like a blank slate when they look at those. And another thing that I found interesting was that they want you listing your coursework that you've taken, your GPA, um, but specifically the coursework that you've taken because if you have a class Let's say you've done a lot of production in or you've had a specific role that has helped you that can help them be better to place you for that internship. Hello, my name is Ashley Schwartz. I am currently an associate producer at People Magazine. Um, previously, I was a department assistant at MTV News um, and I also worked at this, um, I would say mid-sized media company called Town Square Media that owned brands like Double XL, Pop Crush, Dream Crush, like entertainment brands all around. Um, and in terms of my experience in freelancing, um, it really varies. Um, my first job and my current job are freelance, and my second was staff. Um, what I will say about freelancing is that freelancing is an opportunity that you can take, um, even when you're in a current position, if you have something to say. Like when I was a department assistant at MTV News, if I knew I was the best person to tell that story, I would pitch it. Tell us a little bit about your career path and how you got to the position you're in right now. First and foremost, can you guys hear me? I usually don't need a mic up so loud. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for staying up to host our panel. Um, and actually, this is an interesting question because I was a broadcast news major. So I'm sitting here um, having envy for, you know, you took the career path that I didn't. Um, so the question is, what is your, what was my career path? Um, so... I said this earlier, my advice, some of the advice that I got a long time ago was plan your life, not your career. Um, so I think when people, when you look at my career path, I've gone from Boulder, Colorado, to the US Virgin Islands, to Minneapolis, to Austin, Texas, to San Francisco, to Washington, DC, to LA, to New York. Um, and I moved to New York to be the second female publisher of time. And so at that time, I got a lot of questions of, how, you know, how did you plan your career to become the publisher of Time? And honestly, um, I, I just took jobs um, that I thought were interesting, in places that I thought were interesting. I really, um, I got into the advertising business and, and the sales side because I was on the agency side and the, the sellers, the media sellers at the time were people that just looked like they were having a lot of fun. 
as a college student coming to this student communications event, it's a great way to network with other students from all over the country. So a lot of students are from here from Ithaca. There's kids from NYU, Columbia, and it makes I, it makes us as an Iona community able to connect with those bigger schools, which is who have bigger media departments, which also can help further our careers. And you get to meet a lot of amazing panelists who are willing to help you move forward in your career.